Hi. In this session, we discuss about the class equation. For this, we need two things. One is a group and a set. Let us assume that G is a finite group and X be a finite set. And assuming that G adds on X. In the last session, we have seen that G equivalence is an equivalence relation on X. This equivalence relation partition X into disjoint equivalence classes. But we know that X is finite. Therefore, the number of disjoint equivalence classes is also finite. Let OX1, OX2, S2, OX and be the disjoint equivalence classes. Then we can write X is equal to disjoint union of OXIs. That means union I is equal to 1 to an OXI. And since OXIs are disjoint, the number of elements in X is same as the sum of the number of elements of OXI. So let HG be a set of fixed points in X. That is, HG is equal to set of all X in X such that GH is equal to X for all G belongs to G. If X is in X with the GH is equal to X for all G in G, that means that the element which is related to X under G equivalence is only H. That means the equivalence class of H contains only one element, namely the single in H. Therefore, SG is the union of all equivalence classes which contains only one element. That is, SG is a union of all trivial equivalence classes. So therefore, we can split X into the set of equivalence classes with one element and the set of equivalence classes with the more than one element. So we can write the number of elements in X is same as the number of elements in SG plus the sum of the cardinality of the orbits which contains more than one element. Here, thus we have cardinality of X is equal to cardinality of SG plus summation is equal to 1 to K cardinality of OYI where Y1, Y2, etc., YK be the representatives from the distant non-trivial orbits of X. So now onwards we assume that the group the special case, the group action by conjugation. That means G acts on G by conjugation. So which means the star is defined as star of G comma X is equal to GS G inverse. The orbits of this action are called the conjugacy classes of G. Under this action, XG is equal to union of all trivial orbits. That means XG is equal to set of all fixed points in G. That means HG is equal to X and G such that GH, G inverse is equal to X for all G belongs to G. Or HG is equal to set of all X and G such that GH is equal to HG for all G belongs to G, which is same as center of G. Therefore, if X1, S2, S2, XK are the representatives for each non-trivial conjugacy classes of G, then we can write order of G is equal to order of center of G plus cardinal sum of the cardinalities of OXI with OXI is greater than 1. We also define what is a stabilizer subgroup of each XI belongs to X. Here it is X is equal to G. So the stabilizer subgroup of Xi is given by GXI is equal to G in G such that GXI G inverse is equal to Xi. That means set of all G in G with G commute with Xi. That set we denoted as N of Xi and is called as the centralizer subgroup of the Xi's. But we know that the cardinality of OXI is equal to index of GXI in G. Therefore, the equation 
order of g is equal to order center of g plus summation is equal to 1 to k order cardinality of o h psi becomes order of g is equal to cent order of center of g plus summation is equal to 1 to k index of g h psi in g and this equation we call as class equation of g let us see the class equations of sn so we should find out what are the conjugacy classes of sn so let the sigma be an n cycle say sigma is equal to a1 a2 is trail then for any tau belongs to sn tau sigma tau inverse is equal to tau of a1 tau of a2 is to tau of a n which is also an n cycle that means that any two cycles are of the same length are conjugate but we also know that any sigma or any permutation in sn can be written as the product of disjoint cycles so if sigma is equal to sigma 1 sigma 2 etc sigma r where sigma is our uh, cycles and this one is a de cycle decomposition of sigma where each sigma i has length r i then sigma is conjugate to every other tau in sn whose cycle types or cycle decomposition has the same length that is sigma is conjugate to tau if sigma and tau are of the same type now what are the conjugacy classes of sn so therefore the number of conjugacy classes of sn is the number of cycle types of sn now what is a cycle type cycle type of a permutation depends on the partition of n partition of n means the set of positive integers that add up to n therefore the number of conjugacy classes of sn is equal to the number of ways in which n, n can be partition into sum of positive integers that means the number of conjugacy classes is equal to the number of partitions of n for example if n is equal to 2 there are two partitions of 2 namely 1 plus 1 and 2 therefore there are two conjugacy classes for s2 namely it is cycle type of 1 and cycle type of 2 that is clear therefore the class equation of s2 is 1 plus 1 2 is equal to 1 plus 1 so what is the class equation for s3 the partition of 3 are 1 plus 1 plus 1 1 plus 2 and 3 therefore s3 has three conjugacy classes what are they they are one is of one cycle type the other one is of two cycle types and the other one is of three cycle types that means one conjugacy class contains only one cycle element the other contains of two cycles the one two one three and two three and the third conjugacy class contains one two three and one three two therefore the class equation of s3 is 6 is equal to 1 plus 3 plus 2 or 6 is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 now what is the class equation of z3 you know that z3 is equal to 0 1 2 and z3 is a billion therefore the conjugacy class of each element contains only that element itself therefore the conjugacy classes are 0 bar 1 bar and 2 bar therefore the class equation of z3 is 3 is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1 now using this classification we can derive two basically two important properties of a group whose order is p raised to n such group we call it as a p group that means a group of order p raised to n is called as a p group and using class equation we can show that the center of a p group is non trivial that means the center contains more than one element other than e so let us see the proof of this one so by class equation we have cardinal order of g is equal to order of center of g plus summation i is equal to 1 to k cardinality of o h psi where x1 is stressed at xk are the representatives from each of the non trivial equivalent conjugacy classes 
But you know that OHI is a non-trivial conjugacy class. The number of elements in OHI is more than one. And also we know that the cardinality of OHI divides order of G and order of G is P raised to N. And definitely, therefore, order of Xi is greater than or equal to P. In other words, P must divide cardinality of Oxi. Since P divides order of G and since P divides cardinality of Oxi for all I, by the class equation, we have P divides order of center of G. That means that order of center of G contains more than P elements. And since P is a prime number and a prime number, the least prime number is 2, therefore the center of order of G is greater than or equal to 2. Therefore, there exists a G in the center of G such that G not equal to V. Therefore, center of G is not equal to identity. So we can use the class equation to prove that any group of order P square is abelian. Definitely P is a prime number. The proof follows by the class equation. By class equation, order of G is equal to center of G plus summation I is equal to 1 to K cardinality of OXI, where XYs are representatives from each non-trivial conjugacy class of G. So, but for each i, the number of elements in OHI are greater than 1 because OHIs are non-trivial conjugacy class. And also we know that the cardinality of OHI divides order of G and which is P square. Therefore, the cardinality of OHI is greater than or equal to P or P divides cardinality of OHI. So, since P divides order of group, by the class equation, we get P divides center of G as before. This means that order of center of G is greater than or equal to P. Since Z of G is a subgroup of G, by Lagrange's theorem, order of center of G divides order of the group. And therefore, since order of G is greater than or equal to P and it is a divisor of P square, that means order of center of G is either P or P square. So what will happen if order of center of G is P square? In this case, G will become center of G because center of G is a subgroup of G. And this means that G is abelian. So in this case, G is abelian. Suppose order of center of G is equal to P. We know that the center of G is always a normal subgroup of G and so G mod center of G is defined. And what is the order of G mod center of G? The order of G mod center of G is equal to order of G upon order of center of G which is equal to P square by P which is equal to P. That means G mod center of G is a group of order P. But any group of order P or prime order is cyclic. Therefore, G mode center of G is cyclic. Therefore, G is abelian. So hence, we have proved that for any P, a prime, any group of order P square is always abelian. Now, using this, we will see some examples of a class equation. So, 9 is equal to 3 plus 3 plus 3. Is it a class equation of any group G of order 9? This is not true because the first three indicates the order of center of G. Just now we have seen that any group of order P square is abelian and 9 is equal to 3 square, it's a prime square. Therefore, any group of order 9 is uh, an abelian group. So, therefore, G is equal to center of G. So, the center of G contains definitely 9 elements and it is not 3. Therefore, 9 is equal to 3 plus 3 plus 3 is not a class equation of any group. What about the 21 is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 7 is a class equation of any group of order 21? This is also not true because 
Thus, 1 plus 1 indicates the cardinality or sum of the cardinality of trivial conjugacy classes. And that will add up to or take in the union of the set of uh, trivial conjugacy classes will give you the center of the group. This means that the order of the center of the group is 2. But we know that our center of G is always a subgroup of the group G. And by Lagrange's theorem, order of the center of G divides order of the group. That means 2 divides 21, which is not possible. Therefore, 21 is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 7 is not a class equation of any group of order 21. So, what about the 18 is equal to 1 plus 3 plus 6 plus 8? Is it a class equation of any group of order 18? This is also no. Because we know that the cardinality of order of the cardinality of orbit of a conjugate orbit of any x divides the order of the group. That means this 8 indicates the cardinality of a conjugacy class, non-trivial conjugacy class. Therefore, 8 must divide 18, but which is not possible. Therefore, 18 is equal to 1 plus 3 plus 6 plus 8 is not a class equation of any group of order 8. That's all for the day. If you like it, please subscribe my channel, Selby's Maths Capsule. Thank you.